Okay, I figured I'd give a quick update on the radar panel I'm working on. I'll give you a, kind of an idea as to the process that I use. Um, the radar panel that I'm working on right now is the uh, uh, APG-70, I think, V1 radar for the F-15. Anyway, what I, be, what I do is I begin with the uh, depending of the main connector. And this is a label that's on there. I don't know if that will focus or not. But that's the metalized aluminum label that's wrapped around the, the connector end. And it's wrapped around this loom material and it goes into this cannon plug, okay? What I do is I carefully de-pin or remove all the pins from this cannon plug using a special de-pinning tool. It'll either be one of these that's green or one of these that's red, depending on the, uh, the oops, depending on the size of the pin that I need to remove. Um, and I go through and I get all the pins out of it and get it cleaned up. Uh, sometimes if there's a, not a pin in the uh, connector, uh, instead of just leaving an open hole, they'll insert a really tiny plastic pin. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, it's... And I just lost one. Okay. It's, it's really, really, really tiny. Um, you can barely see that. Um, it's really small. Anyway, they use those to prevent stuff getting into the, getting past the connector body into the, the shell. And then there's a, a little strain relief that goes on the back of the cannon plug like that. Um, this one's actually got damage on it. Uh, this was pulled from uh, my F-15 cockpit, and it had been used as a at some point is a battle damage repair trainer and somebody had actually shot at it. Um, a couple of spots with pistol, a couple of spots looks like it was a shotgun. Um, I actually recovered pieces of, of lead uh, off of some of the interior spaces. That was kind of irritating. Anyway, what I do is I take the panel down to this. Um, I'm working on these two uh, controls right now and that works out to be the power and the elevation scan button. This is power, this is elevation scan. Um, and I've got it completely gutted as you can see. As I rewire each one of these I'll pull it out, clip all the wires off, take the desolder it, clean it up, and then map out the switch and only use uh, the poles on the switch that I need to for the task that I need to do. Um, this is the back side of this panel, okay? Um, this is the other cannon plug. This is the one that mates to this. This is all pins, whereas this is all sockets. Same process, depin it so I can reuse it. These things are frighteningly expensive and really hard to get mat mates to uh, if you're trying to mate a specific connector which is kind of sad, but it is what it is. Um, the whole chassis box here is what covers all of that. And uh, you can see this is what the, the back of the box looks like. Um, and then I've got all of the knobs and things like that. And in some cases I'll clean these up, in some cases I won't. These are not really damaged or marked up. Um, so I will go ahead and, and just leave these as it is. They, don't, they really don't present any specific restoration problem. Um, here's one of the, uh, the switches that I've pulled out so far. This, I believe, is the EL scan. It is a, what, five position switch, a rotary switch with a push button. 
Um, this has already been pulled apart. I've wired new connectors on it. You can see here, I'll try to focus to see if you can't see these pins. Come on camera, focus. Focus. I think that's focused, I'm not sure. Anyway, those are mil-spec crimp on pins. Um, they require a special crimping die, a crimping tool, like this. And essentially what this does is it grabs that pin and you really can't see it on camera, but there's actually four dies inside here. And when I crimp it, it collapses the pin shell or the socket shell uh, in four different places. Um, it's actually pretty cool. I'll close it just a little bit and see if I can't get a, a good picture of that. I can't tell if this camera's focused or not, but I may take a single shot of this if it's badly out of focus and, uh, and try that again. Um, but you insert the entire thing in here until it bottoms out and then just close it and crimp it and you're done. Um, it's got some adjustments on it that I really don't use because I don't have any instructions on how this particular tool actually is supposed to be used properly. The settings that it came on or that it came with uh, are properly crimping the wiring. So I'm gonna run with it. This is this specific tool is only for 22 gauge wire, which is good because that's what I'm using uh, in the F15 for all the signal wire. And then we have the edge lip panel. Clean that up a little bit um, for the radar. And you can see it's got all the, the various things on it. I do need to clean this up just a little bit. I will not restore it because it's not scarred up or damaged enough for me to, to go to that kind of effort. Uh, this is the back of the panel. This particular panel is a type five uh, edge lit or trans illuminated panel. You can tell uh, that it's got little screws here. Okay. And this is, this whole thing here is actually a printed circuit board that's single sided and it's very thin. It's probably a 32nd of an inch or less. Um, and uh, on the opposite side, it's got tiny little grain of rice bulbs that illuminate the panel. And every time you, every white dot you see here is the location of one of those lamps. Um, it tells you here that this entire panel takes up 1.84 amps when illuminated and you operate it at five volts max. Uh, normally in a, in a military aircraft, this is lit with uh, AC voltage. Um, I'm not going that route, I'm gonna be using DC. Uh, for one, it's easier for me to produce, and for two, uh, a five volt lamp at DC will last longer than AC, simply because the, the bulb filament does not experience the uh, uh, metal fatigue uh, caused by AC current flowing through it. Um, um, here's some of the other bits and pieces that came in that radar panel. Um, I don't know what a lot of this stuff is for, primarily because I ain't got any documentation on it and it's no good for my purposes anyway. To me, it's just extra hardware. Um, stuff that ends up in my, uh, my spare parts box. Uh, because it's not part of the, the panel rebuild itself. And, uh, oh, it also had a little Hobbs meter in it. So this particular radar assembly panel, or radar panel, had been powered on for 5,975 hours, which is probably really close to the flight hours of the aircraft that it was in when it was removed. Um, and then that's, here's another switch assembly. This one is to be rebuilt. I haven't started, I've got it mapped out, uh, but I haven't started the work on it yet. I need to get my butt in gear and get that done. So let's move on to how I wire up the main harness for the panels. Okay, um, this is a wooden framework that uh, 
a friend of mine built for me that I use to uh, position all the panels and make sure that my wire length is correct. Uh, I've got a zoom in here on this cannon plug. This is a 125 pin cannon plug that will actually attach into uh, a hole in the uh, uh, bottom of the side uh, in the fuselage. Essentially exactly where it came from in the original uh, configuration. Um, what I do is I will wire uh, a panel like the radar panel and then I will build the harness by routing, routing a single wire up into the, uh, the location where the panel is. I'm going to move the camera here real quick. Okay, the radar panel is actually going to go right here. So what I would do is, uh, is route the wire across and up to get a distance and then I would cut however many I needed for that, uh, form it into a harness and then number the wires and work it into the, uh, uh, the harness and then move on to the other panels from there. Um, here you can see I've got, uh, this is the miscellaneous panel is done, the ILS TACAN panel is done, the CAS panel is done. <coughs> I've got the fuel panel in place but not wired up yet. Um, this is the electronic warfare panel. This panel is actually one that I scratch built myself because uh, there was no way you were going to find one of these on eBay. Um, it's not one of my better assemblies but it really certainly does get the job done. Um, then I've got an EFF panel back here. Uh, there's a blanking plate kind of hanging out. Uh, the AAI uh, panel is here. I don't know if you can see that. Then the uh, formation lights so or the exterior lights panel is here. Uh, moving to the, the back over here. I'm going to turn the camera just a little bit. Wow, that sucked. Uh, this is not a pan and, twil pan and swivel tripod that works really well. This is the bit panel for running built-in tests. This is the ground power panel. Uh, this is a crypto panel. And I think the only thing I am missing out of the panels I need for this is the HF radio panel for this side. Um, the, uh, the throttle quadrant I've got ready to go. Um, all of this has been rewired as necessary, including this, the, uh, the finger lifts here. This is how you actually, when the JFS or the jet fuel starter and the F-15 is engaged, when you pull the, the finger lift up, uh, essentially there's a, a gearbox called the Air AMAD, which is the airframe mounted accessory drive. And that essentially uh, mechanically connects the output of the JFS to the input of whichever motor you've selected to spin it up to begin to start it. Um, and you'd have to take the throttle out of the idle gate position and it's, yeah, it's out of that right now. If you lift this up, it'll go behind that into cutoff. Um, and if you're flying, that's bad because it shuts the engine down. That's why there's a gate that you hit. Um, and then I need to replace the adhesive here because this is coming up. But, and then I've got a, a data cartridge uh, panel right here. I need to get a data cartridge shell for that so I can actually have something to, to put in there. Barring that, good enough dimensions that I could fabricate a, a, a replica of it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And it's just plow through the panels and get them done. I'm going to start uh, working on that, or working on this project again real soon. Uh, I'm currently working on a CNC machine for some other projects. Um, and I suspect you'll see videos about that on this channel as well. Um, anyway, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it if you'd subscribe as well. And uh, have a great day.